Hey everyone, so obviously over the last few months we've done a big bunch of PlayStation 4 Pro and Xbox One X comparisons, but what we haven't been able to do is to analyse the differences at the hardware level, looking at the actual physical makeup of each console's processor. But now, for the first time, we do actually have a chance to see how the Sony and Microsoft chips compare, which leads to some fascinating results, specifically that the two processors are actually very, very similar, which is quite remarkable, bearing in mind some of the game differentials that we've seen. But processor layouts, yeah, this is gonna require a bit of explanation. So this is Microsoft's CG render of Xbox One X's Scorpio engine that we saw at the E3 media briefing last year. A really nice piece of animation here showing the individual compute units slotting into place. And there are the banks of Jaguar-based CPU cores there. And now we're zooming out to show how the overall layout fits into the context of the chip itself. And from there, the integration of the processor with the mainboard and memory. The Scorpio engine itself, well, strip out the flashy CG and this is what you have. Now, microprocessors actually have a number of layers, which you have to kind of strip back to give this kind of image. But you can think of this as kind of like the essential, fundamental layout of the chip. The GPU compute units there, the CPU cores, the GDDR5 memory controllers, the front end fabric. So why is this useful? Well, measuring the area of the silicon used gives us some idea of how much it costs to produce and kind of sets the limits of how far a console manufacturer can go in producing a cost-effective console. And it's photography like this that cleared up the confusion surrounding Switch's apparently customized Tegra processor. The die shot, as it's called, looked identical to a standard Tegra X1 because, well, it is indeed a standard Tegra X1. So here's the layout of the PlayStation 4 Pro's chip and the story of how we actually got this is fascinating in itself. You see, this is actually the work of a German chap who goes under the alias of Fritschens Fritz. Yeah, excuse that terrible pronunciation there, but what he does is to take production chips, usually from dead or donated hardware, strips them from their host board, encases them in epoxy, and then the layers are kind of stripped back until we see something like this. So the example video he posted here, link in the description, showing his process is actually using a standard Xbox One chip here. And after extreme magnification, we get this. So yeah, once again, you can see those CPU cores, the GPU compute units, and the 32 megs of ES RAM, a feature you won't see on Xbox One X, of course. But it's the PlayStation 4 Pro chip that's really of interest because Sony never released a die shot. And so here it is. And well, here are the headlines. Those familiar clusters to the left, those are the two quad-core AMD Jaguar CPU clusters. 2.1 gigahertz here compared to the 1.6 gigahertz in the original PS4, but otherwise untouched. Now we know that the Pro has 36 compute units and you can see those here in two banks of 20. Yes, 20 each side for 40 in total. Now four CUs are disabled, and this is to allow chips with slight defects from the production line to still be used in final hardware, saving a ton of cash. So when I talked to Mark Cerny, he mentioned that the GPU was kind of like the wings of a butterfly. The amount of compute units is doubled from the base PS4's 18 to the Pro's 36. The amount of inactive CUs is also doubled then, but what I found interesting here is that the second bank of CUs on the right are actually kind of taller and narrower than those on the left. Now I'm not quite sure why, but there we go, perhaps some kind of layer optimization. Now let's bring in the Scorpio engine layout. Some extra cache is added to the Jaguar CPU clusters, but they are fundamentally still Jaguars with the same basic design. But in terms of physical differences with the Pro chip, well, it only has four extra compute units, 44 in total with 40 active in retail hardware. In terms of physical area, the Scorpio engine is less than 10% larger than the Pro. Those extra CUs account for some of the extra area, but there's also the additional GDDR5 memory controllers. So we have a 256-bit interface total on the Pro, which is reflected by a 384-bit bus on the X. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that as fascinating as the comparison is, we are only seeing the fundamental building blocks of each chip here. 
There's a lot of bespoke customization built in at the hardware level that obviously you can't see. Microsoft factored in a range of GPU optimizations for improved performance. Sony added hardware level checkerboarding support and aspects of AMD's Vega architecture, including support for AAF F16, so-called rapid packed math. Sony also deployed a revised compute unit structure, which may explain why the CUs in the Pro are about 15% larger overall than the equivalent hardware in Xbox One X. And it's fascinating to see so much commonality between the two chips here, when the differences in end result in actual games can be so profound. So yeah, I mean, id Software know what they're doing with Radeon hardware, and yet the difference between Wolfenstein 2 running on X and Pro, pretty massive, gigantically in favor of the new Microsoft console in many areas, and we noted similar differences in another game engine known for Radeon optimization, the Frostbite engine shown here running Star Wars Battlefront. And this kind of emphasizes that as core to the overall design as the silicon is, external factors beyond the physical makeup of the chip are equally as important. So yeah, the wider memory interface and 4 gigs of extra RAM is obviously a massive plus point for the Xbox One X. But the key innovation, and certainly the thing that stood out to me in the Scorpio spec, concerns the clock speeds. There's a 911 megahertz GPU clock on Pro, 1172 megahertz on X. Microsoft only has an additional 11% in terms of compute unit count, but this is matched by a 29% increase in clocks. And of course, that was achieved with a remarkable engineering effort that saw each individual processor's voltage requirements paired with individual main boards, and of course, an excellent thermal assembly that uses a vapor chamber heatsink. So comparisons in terms of area and configuration are possible here because both chips are using the 16 nanometer FinFET production process from the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC. And we see so many similarities, obviously, because both chips are semi-custom designs from AMD. But from my perspective, what's interesting here is what this could mean for the next gen consoles, which I personally suspect we'll be seeing in 2019. Once again, I believe that it will be AMD partnering with both Sony and Microsoft. And I believe that both consoles, both processors, will be using the next gen 7 nanometer process. TSMC should be in full production mode on that this year, giving Sony and Microsoft a good year to see the process settle down. So with PlayStation 5 and Xbox 2, there's every chance that we'll see the same core technology, the same overall design objectives. But I think what Xbox One X has taught us is that customization, and more importantly, what's happening outside of the chip, will set out the key differences between the next wave of machines. Now, what form will those consoles take? Well, it's entirely theoretical, of course, right now, but I've had some ideas which I'll share soon. But in the meantime, if you found this interesting, please do like and subscribe to support the work we do. And remember to follow us on Twitter for all of the latest DF updates. That's all from me for now, though. Thanks for watching.